Welcome to another episode of Mike Out here in the uh, cold of the night. And uh, this episode is about scotopic vision, uh, which is a fancy term for uh, natural or unassisted night vision. You probably already know that uh, red light is uh, traditionally uh, recommended to preserve night vision. But why is that? And is red really a good color for navigating in the dark? In order to understand how different wavelengths of light or color affect our visual acuity in low light conditions, we need to understand how our eyes work. Visible light is high frequency electromagnetic radiation, sort of like radio waves, which is low frequency long wavelength radiation. Or X-rays, which is very high frequency, very short wavelength radiation. We measure radiation in either wavelength, like meters, or frequency, hertz. Uh, when the wavelength increases, the frequency decreases, and vice versa. The visual spectrum is uh, usually given in nanometers, which is wavelength. Humans can see electromagnetic radiations of wavelength from about 390 nanometers to about 700 nanometers. Uh, and that translates into 770 terahertz to uh, down to uh, 430 terahertz. The standard human eye has five types of receptors or electromagnetic radiation receivers, as I like to call them, to detect radiation within the so-called visual spectrum. There are three types of cones, one type of rods, and a very small amount of something called photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. Uh, as you may suspect, cone cells look like cones, and rod cells look like rods. Intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, or IPRGCs, uh, were discovered as late as in 1990s and uh, they help us maintain circadian rhythm uh, and melatonin levels. Uh, essentially that is being awake during uh, day and asleep during the night. Uh, this talk is only about uh, the cones and the rods. Cones uh, contain different photoopsin proteins while rods contain the protein rhodopsin, like rods. Rhodopsin. These proteins uh, basically act like bandpass filters to be more or less sensitive to different frequencies within the visual spectrum. There are three types of cone cells, each uh, with a different photopsin. S for uh, detecting light of short wavelength, for example blue, and M for detecting light of medium wavelength, for example green and L to detect light of long wavelength, yellow to red. It's almost as if uh, the eye has uh, red, green and blue receptors that our brain uh, uh, processes uh, to identify color depending on how intense the signal is in respective uh, wavelength. Cone cells are uh, very insensitive to conditions of low illumination and used exclusively during daylight when uh, or similar uh, light conditions uh, when there is uh, high intensity light available. This is called photopic vision. We only have one type of rod cells. Uh, rod cells, however, uh, are very sensitive to light uh, due to the rod rhodopsin protein. Uh, rods are used exclusively for scotopic vision, uh, which is uh, unassisted night vision. As there is only one type of rod, we only see in shades of grey when light is dim enough that it is uh, undetectable by cone cells. Also, uh, we don't have any rods, only cones, in the fovea, uh, which is the area uh, responsible for sharp central vision, which results in low uh, resolution reception uh, when there is uh, low light conditions. Uh, which is why our vision is a bit grainy uh, when it's dark. Uh, 
Rod cells or uh, the rhodopsin protein is uh, most sensitive to a bluish green uh, frequency in the visual spectrum and is much, much less sensitive to uh, red light uh, or long wavelength light. When uh, rod cells are exposed uh, to light of uh, too high intensity, a chemical process called bleaching occurs. Uh, and the otherwise uh, pinkish rhodopsin uh, turns transparent. Depending on how bright which frequency used and for how long the rods are exposed to intense light, it will take anywhere from a few minutes to uh, several hours uh, or even days uh, to re regenerate the rhodopsin in the rods and make them sensitive to uh, low light again. Uh, it generally takes about uh, 30 minutes to achieve uh, a decent enough scotopic vision uh, when going from uh, normal daylight to uh, conditions of low intensity light. It's also important to remember that uh, the rhodopsin protein is uh, highly dependent on adequate uh, levels of vitamin A. Uh, vitamin A deficiency leads to night blindness. So uh, a balanced diet is uh, important for optimal night vision. Of course, age uh, is also important. Uh, is an important factor. Uh, when you pass the fifties uh, or so, the rods become increasingly less sensitive. Since rods are less sensitive to red light, and it's actually uh, scientifically uh, proven uh, that uh, the rods regenerate uh, quicker when exposed to bright red light than white or uh, green light. Uh, so it's uh, logical to assume that red light is absolutely optimal for uh, navigating the forest when you want to preserve both your night vision and batteries in your headlamp. However, uh, red light has uh, many drawbacks. Uh, rods and L cones, uh, long wavelength uh, receptor cones, uh, are not very sensitive to the deep red light required to keep rods adapted to the dark. That means that uh, you need to output much more power from your headlamp in order to see something uh, than when using uh, white or green light of lower intensity. Although rods are not very sensitive to red light, it doesn't mean that uh, they won't bleach out uh, if the intensity of the red light is high enough. Most people experience horrible depth perception uh, with dim red light, uh, which makes uh, moving around the bush uh, much harder under uh, uh, those conditions than when you're seeing green light or white light of the same intensity. Uh, my humble opinion is that uh, green light is the best light for preserving both night vision and uh, batteries when uh, moving around in the wild, provided that the light is uh, dim enough. Since rods are very sensitive to green light, uh, it's a lot easier to see objects at a distance, especially since uh, green foliage uh, reflect green better than uh, red. So uh, that is something which is uh, nearly impossible with uh, red light of the same amount of lumen. Also, uh, medium wavelength and uh, long wavelength receptor cones are fairly sensitive to, fairly sensitive to green, uh, which enables you to use twice uh, the amount of cones in the fovea and see sharper uh, than when using red light of the same intensity. This also enables you to identify a few colors, uh, only, only a slight a few. Uh, something which is uh, impossible with uh, red light. My opinion is that red light is best for short range perception, especially indoors or in a more urban environment where you have uh, surfaces that uh, more easily reflect the red light. Uh, while I find uh, green to be superior for long range perception and uh, moving around in the wild. The headlamp I'm wearing right now is a Petzl uh, Tactica Plus uh, RGB. So it has uh, uh, your normal white uh, LED light and uh, a red, green and blue LED light.
combination LED light. The red, green and blue are all uh, 5 lumen. So that means they, they produce the same amount of energy. Uh, you won't uh, see it in the video but uh, 5 lumen of uh, green light gives you way much better visual acuity uh, than 5 lumen of red light. I find that 5 lumen of, uh, of green light to be a good threshold for preserving most of the uh, scotopic vision, that is the uh, natural unassisted uh, night vision uh, required at night while also experience uh, good visual acuity. The uh, blue light in this headlamp was uh, probably intended for use with uh, third generation image intensifiers uh, as uh, Gen 3 night vision equipment uh, doesn't enhance uh, the blue part of the spectrum uh, very well, uh, making it useful for uh, when you're in an airplane and you have instruments shining blue and uh, you have uh, you want to use a headlamp while some people wear night vision goggles and some don't, I guess. Generation 2 uh, night vision uh, equipment is uh, sometimes fitted with a so-called uh, minus blue filter uh, for the very same effect as the Gen 3 uh, night vision. Some sources say that uh, blue, the blue light is uh, good for finding blood uh, and uh, that is simply not true. Uh, blue light may uh, make uh, colored liquids uh, appear darker uh, but that is only useful in uh, up close, so uh, not even ultraviolet light is good for uh, identifying or finding blood at the distance. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, most game are very sensitive to uh, blue light, so uh, tracking game with uh, a blue light instead of a red light, for example, is uh, that may uh, scare them away even more. So, this is it for uh, this episode of uh, Mike Out, and uh, I hope you found it useful. Uh, please subscribe, and uh, thank you for uh, watching, and Happy New Year. This is Mike, out.